Yes, hi. Now I'm going to explain how I uh, use the cryptographic map to reach the location up at Gold River using um, hints and uh, also the map using hints and sonnets and first folio and other publications and also the cryptographic map. Um, so I started with, uh, we would start with a drilled rock investigation in, uh, in relation to the ge geometric map here. So the geometric map from uh, North Northumberland manuscript and sonnets results in a three four five triangle having two uh, three dots on it, and uh, these three dots uh, is positioned in a very special place. So we have two dots very close to each other, and then uh, is the, if this this distance is one, then this distance to the third rock. Uh, third uh, reference point is 17 in proportion. So um, if we place the map as a first example, we know that uh, if they're gonna, re if these reference points is gonna um, uh, be drilled rocks on Oak Island, as we get strong, strong hints from uh, in the Shakespeare sonnets, uh, then we must understand that the three rocks must be placed on Oak Island as it looked uh, back in the day when it was built. So the, the sea level was a bit lower. But um, if we put them like this, we see, if we, if we just start with putting them on, the, on the, the land of the current Oak Island, we see that the maximum distance between drill rock, drill rock two and three uh, is approximately 315 feet. So if if any rocks, if any two rocks that are drilled are placed uh, further apart than this, then they can't be candidates for drill rock two and three. So this is pretty uh, just um, exclusion logic here. So we know there are not many uh, drilled rocks on Oak Island uh, that have been found. Uh, there's a few of them scattered, scattered around, and most of them are on the east side of a island around the money pit uh, area. So this is the official Roper survey from the 1930s. And we have a drill rock here, uh, and then we have an, an east drill rock here. There is also another one uh, down here that we should see when we go further here. But the Roper survey makes us, uh, is actually quite good because if we're using a, um, a geo-referenced map, like in a, in, in a mapping software or drawing software, like Illustrator, like I did, then we can uh, easily uh, place stuff um, on that map, just using the Roper map, actually. So we see there are uh, 93.72 meters from that drill rock up to a survey point here. Uh, so, so what I've done is that I've combined, uh, um, I combined the Roper survey with a service that uh, the Restals did in the 60s. And there are several of those surveys. We, we have this yellow one that is just more for tourists, but it's, uh, so it's very official. But it shows um, the white granite drilled rock that is in the Roper survey. And we also have the gray or the slate drilled rock that was placed quite close to it. Uh, and in uh, uh, Lee Lamb's books on the Restals, she, she like published in 2012, I think, she, she explains the distance between the West and the Grey. Uh, and it's also on a map, you can figure it out on a map that is placed in the Oak Island Museum up at Chester, the Danish Museum. There's, that map has been there since 2012. And I also got it from Lee Lamb's um, private collection that there is uh, the distance between them, between these two rocks is 21 feet. Um, so with geometry or trigonometry, I should say, we could, uh, we can actually place these rocks on a map, a geo-referenced geo geo map that you uh, having Illustrator, I did a, a download a plugin to Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, where you can place everything in GPS positions, and take measurements and so on. 
So here we see the uh, uh, an image from the slate drill rock. This is when it's unearthed and moved. And this is how it looked originally. This is from the 1930s, this image. And you see the, the form here is the same as here. Uh, so so this is like a two inch wide drilled hole, very rough drilled hole, uh, a few inches deep. And this is, um, uh, but I, what I'm saying is that it looks like an hole, an old hole, so to speak. There's, it has been um, subject to weather and so on. So with these calculations, uh, what I did, uh, and, and this is, you can do this two ways. You can do it in a bit more complex way using only um, maps and surveys that are accessed uh, publicly. Or you can do it a little simpler way with um, a map that I did you see here that I got from Lee Lamb. Uh, and all the other stuff has been public since uh, 2012 or earlier. Um, so, if we look down here, so uh, from the cryptographic map, we get three reference points. And uh, then we get two point lines stretching out. And if we place the, the two points very close to each other, and uh, just assume that West Drill Rock and Slate Drill Rock are those two rocks, then we get the following layout. And as we know that the, the maximum distance between them cannot be uh, more than 350 feet, or else the third drill rock will just end up in the waters outside Oak Island. Then, then we could, with, uh, with exclusion, actually say that if the two rick, if the two drill rocks that are used for this map is found and known, then there cannot be any other drill rocks of the known drill rocks than the western slate. That is what we know. And the interesting thing here is that the the, the, the rock, the third drill rock, should be up here in the, in the center of the island, on the east, east part of the island. And uh, so I got permission from Rick Lagina back in 2013, I think it was, to um, investigate this, this GPS location that I got from the map I used. And uh, what we see here is there are two pits here like Dunfield pits, we think it was Dunfield that did them. And there is no drill rock, but uh, what Legina theorized was that uh, he dug this big pit around here because of the drill rock, because he thought there was something under it or something. And also Fred Nolan told Rick Legina that he had seen a drill rock in the 60s, located at the center of the east end of the island. It's approximately the same location uh, I'm investigating. Uh, we also have an, uh, around here an old stone wall with large round rocks. So it could be that someone built a uh, this stone wall and used the drill rock from here to build that rock, that wall. We don't know. Uh, okay, let's get back here. So what we're seeing is that uh, if we assume that this is correct, then the map actually uh, points straight up. The, the point lines point straight up and goes up the Gold River, um, what do you say, the Gold River uh, entrance to the Gold River, and then straight up here, and then it start crossing, they start crossing each other uh, in this area up here. Um, so, and also, if you look at the, the Peter Amazon's Tree of Life, if you extend this line here, going from that uh, bowler through the center and that bowler and extend it upwards. There is a actually a slight angle to it and it also follows up and it goes exactly up here and it and it will uh, cross here up here as well. I don't know anything about that, but my, maybe that's not a coincidence or maybe there's some, uh, not, some thought about it, I don't know. But anyway, we are still working with an assumption, of course, that the West Drill Rock and the Slate Drill Rock are those to be used with the map. But then we go to back to the sonnets and other places in the um, in the in the Shakespeare works and look for stuff. And here we have clear in the the text of the sonnets we have uh, this passage. 
Each cheek a river running from a fount, with brinish current downwards flowed apace. Oh, how the channel to the stream, is this a channel to a stream, gave grace, who glazed with crystal gate the glowing roses, that flame through water which the hue encloses. Here we have another one. This is from the first folio. Draw them to Tiber banks and weep your tears into the channel into the channel, the lower stream, do kiss the most exalted shores of all, see whether the basest metal be not moved. Who is, what is the exalted, exalted shores of all? Maybe this shore here, because here's where the, the, the rock is, uh, the exo boulder, who knows. Uh, or dive into the bottom of the deep where fathom line could never touch the ground and pluck up drowned honor by the locks. So a fathom line is something you drop to see the depth uh, of water. So maybe or dive into the bottom of the deep where fathom line could never touch the ground and pluck up drowned honor by the locks. We don't know but uh, you know up here we also have a place, uh, if, if something is buried under the ground, under the boulder, then a fathom line could not touch it, of course. Uh, up here we have, say shall the current of your right run on, whose passage vexed or disturbed, with thy impediment obstruction, shall leave his native channel and oars well with course disturbed even thy confined shores, also for first folio. But here is the most interesting passage here from the first folio as well. Um, and if you see, here is the exo bowl, and you see that the, the, the river is turning very sharply, and it looks like half a circle here. Uh, and in this passage, um, I think it is some of the uh, King place, I don't remember King James something. The whole play is about someone that moves a river to, to get more land. So he's moving a river to get more land. We have this passage. See how this river comes me cranking in and cuts me from the best of all my land. A huge half moon, a huge half moon, a monstrous cantle out. A cantle out is what is up on a, a, a horse saddle like this half circle. I'll have the current in this place dammed up. So did you dam up the river? And here the smug and silver trend shall run in a new channel, fair and evenly. It shall not wind with such deep intent to rob me of so rich a bottom here. So it seems like it's describing the actual uh, environment where this exoboulder is placed. And also that something is uh, placed uh, on or underneath the bottom. Uh, and that they dammed up the, the river. This is of course just insinuations and so on. But my claim is that they use this kind of language and this methodology to try to attract people and give clues uh, for them when they uh, decrypted the map. If it was just like pure cryptography that you can you can either have the right result or no result at all, then you know it will be too easy to crack. So this is an intelligence test, and a um, and they're speaking to people uh, of um, esoteric tradition in the future. Uh, and the two last sonnets. They also speak about, uh, they have um, the theme about something in water, like 153 and 154. Uh, Cupid laid by his brand torch and fell asleep, a maid of Dian's woodless, woodland goddess this advantage found, and his love kindling fire did quickly steep, soak, in a cold valley fountain of that ground. And a cold valley fountain, you know, the the site up at Gold River has uh, big hills on both sides, so it's in a valley. Uh, and it's also coal, of course, because it's river water. Uh, yes, and it's about uh, Diane seeking uh, or soaking the, the fire, the Cupid's fire down here. And Cupid is, of course, someone that uh, shoots an arrow 
Whilst many nymphs that vowed chast, chast life to keep came tripping by, but in a maiden hand, that fairest votary worshipper took up that fire which many legions of true hearts had warmed, and so the general of hot desire Cupid was sleeping by a virgin hand disarmed. This brand she quenched in a cool well by. So we have the same theme here that uh, Diane. She, she uh, drowned something in water. Then we have some other interesting parallels. Uh, and this is, of course, Bacon uh, pointing at water in some kind of bend here. We have trees all over. It looks like, uh, it doesn't look like a sea, it more looks like a pond. And, and you, of course, you have the, uh, the sun reflecting here. And this is from two uh, Rosicrucian uh, books published back in the day when they were popular. And here we see two figures that look like bacon and uh, standing on two boxes. One box said, I'm sworn to silence. Another one, I place my hope in the future. So with, with this, uh, you know, in, um, hint that they have done a project, a very secret project, that is directed towards the future and not uh, uh, the time they lived in. And we also see that we have uh, a castle, is that the protection facility perhaps, and there are lines going out uh, hitting the, the, the RC um, cross. Or is it cannonballs or that jumping up? We don't know, but there are some kind of lines going out here. And then we also have, of course, in uh, Daniel Mergling's Rosicrucian, we have a lot of lines with um, uh, birds flying. Uh, I acknowledge my ignorance helped the father. We have a lot of uh, cryptic stuff, but a lot of lines here, and it seems like, um, uh, yeah, li like the, the birds are extending lines from a castle in the middle, and then we have north, east, south, west here we have someone going down to well says very cruel nature of the hazard uh, well of opinions said is this the money pit we don't know and, and back here in the background we have actually a house on a boat standing on a uh, hill is this the place and you see two small birds here is this the place where the uh, lines are going we don't know, but it's a house on a boat. Maybe it's on water. We don't know. This is uh, vague hints. And uh, we have another thing here. In 1911, Dr. Orville Ward Owen uh, produced a massive search on the River Wye in England for boxes he claimed contained the manuscripts of Shakespeare. Why he was looking under the river Y was because he claimed that he found uh, hints and instructions in the Shakespeare first folio obviously he was he was investigating um, that he think Bacon used uh, an ancient Visigoth technique of damming up rivers and moving them in order to build uh, burial chambers underneath them and 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 uh, Dr. Owen thought that uh, Bacon used this method to hide the um, the manuscripts on the River Y, and later, for long later in his life, he he, uh, he regretted all this stuff and uh, and theorized that the manuscripts were on Oak Island instead. Yes, yeah, so this is the uh, the method of how I uh, came to investigate the location at, at Gold River. And as we know now, we have found. Uh, two iron artifacts there that are, uh, are very old and a lot of other stuff as well. <laughs> 